That's good. Well, welcome. Happy Sabbath to a lot of you. I'm glad to be with you this morning. <clears throat> this is my first attempt at trying to do live stream. So I hope you'll bear with me. I would like to make a couple announcements first. And that is, if you have offerings for the Hobbs Church, please send it to P.O. Box 1469, Hobbs, New Mexico, 88241. And for Lovington, the post office box is 2049, 2049, Lovington, New Mexico, 88260. And for Roswell, it's 2915, South Union, Roswell, New Mexico. And I'm going to put that up here so that you can see it a little bit better and so that you can get the addresses that you need down. Okay. So there you have Post Office Box 1469, Hobbs, New Mexico, for your tithes and offering. Post Office Box 2049 for Lovington, New Mexico, 88260. And for Roswell, 2915 South Union, Roswell, New Mexico, 8820, and I believe it's three, not six. Made a mistake there. <clears throat> anyway, I'd like to welcome to you to first time trying to broadcast. And uh, please remember uh, your in your giving to give to the church expenses because they still continue even though the church is not open. Your gas and electric, water and trash uh, still have to be paid. So please remember that as you give. This morning I've chosen <clears throat> to speak about faith in the middle of a crisis. And I'm using the text of Psalm 23, verse 4. But I would like to start off with our local budget in giving. When we serve, we create a better future. Shelley had two young children. And uh, she walked into a, a local library and she struck up a conversation with another mother who also had two children of similar age. A friendship ensued. In a few minutes went by, and Shelley learned that her friend was struggling financially, living paycheck to paycheck. Lord impressed Shelley, a nurse, to help. And she talked with her husband, and they decided to purchase a few boxes of diapers and clothes. She sent them to her friend anonymously, and they learned that the struggling mother, mother did not have any means to purchase this much needed item of diapers. The gift could not have come at a better time. But despite desiring to remain anonymous, Shelley and her husband were discovered and thanked for their kindness. Such acts of kindness are examples of how we can serve and in the process create miracles in other people's lives. Today, single parent households are one of the fastest growing demographics and single parents live in our local communities, working, shopping and eating. When we are faithful in our giving, we serve the needs of the local communities such as a single parent household. Let us give generously today to our local budget. And again, I want to remind you that the post office box in Hobbs is 1469 and that's 88241. And in Lovington, it's post office box 2049, Lovington, New Mexico, 88260. And in Roswell, it's 2915 South Union, Roswell, New Mexico, 88203, not 206. I made a mistake there as I typed it up. But please remember that in your giving. 
And I would also like to recommend some other things here while I have it on the uh, paper. You can listen into your local Hope Channel or Esperanza TV for the Spanish speaking, or It Is Written for the English, or Escrito Esta for the, my Spanish brothers and sisters. We also have 3ABN TV or 3ABN Latino TV for our Spanish brothers and sisters, and Amazing Facts TV and Amazing Discoveries TV. Some other good websites are Adventist World Radio, Adventist Southwest, Southeast Asia Projects. All of these are great uh, places to listen on the internet or on the TV or both. So please remember that in your Sabbath keeping. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm thrilled to be here on Facebook Live. And as I learn more about how to do this, we will develop uh, Facebook pages on our different uh, churches. But for now, it's all with on my Facebook. And this morning, as I begin, I'd like to, to give a, a sermon about faith in the middle of a crisis. And I'd like to use Psalm 23, verse 4 as our scripture verse. And Psalm 23, verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And so as I begin this morning, I'd like to open with a word of prayer. Loving Father, we thank you for the ability to reach out to our members wherever they are in all three churches. And I ask, Father, that you might bless in a special way and that you would uh, give them understanding and help during this time. May they depend on you like never before. And I ask, Father, for you to be with them and give them comfort. Those that are struggling because of loss of job or other issues. And we ask, Father, that you would uh, bless this uh, sermon this morning and that it might give hope and encouragement to others. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We all go through troubles in our lives. Life is a combination of easy and tough times, defeat and victories, failures and successes, and emotional mountaintops and valleys. Crises show what we are made of. And it develops our character. No matter what, God is with us. And Psalm 23, verse 4 again says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And I want you to take that promise. God is with us no matter what. And he wants us to learn to trust him in the middle of our problems. All of us suffer crisis in our life. A few weeks ago, no one would have imagined that a microscopic bug would have caused as much trouble as we're seeing around us. Millions have lost their jobs. Money is tight for others and maybe not even existent. Food shortages are a problem. We never thought we'd be hard up for toilet paper, but that's the way it is. We can't congregate or socialize like we have in the past. Uh, we can't worship like we once were. We don't know because we don't know who the carrier is. And we've seen babies, young, old, die because of this virus. Healthcare workers, Doctors, nurses, cleaning people have come down with the virus and are dying. And Adventists are not immune because I've talked with several people 
in the church. Uh, we have a head elder in China and his wife that came down with the virus. In Louisiana, we have a volunteer pastor and other leaders that came down with the virus that I've heard about. And I keep telling people, maybe God is saying, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I believe he has allowed this so that we will learn to depend on him and not on our money or the jobs or our health or the government's ability to help. And for everything to be taken away, we must realize that God is in control. And yes, things may get tough. And the devil is trying to kill us, or at least hurt us. Yet God is still in control. Now I'd like you to look at your Bible, open your Bible to John 16, 33. John 16, 33. John 16, 33. You know, Jesus said we would have trouble in this world. And that's what we have right now. And John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. With Jesus by our side, we can overcome any trouble. And I'm sure some of you have seen it, and I have seen it. Crises are part of this life. None of us can get away from it. Whether it be health, or finances, or jobs, or relationships, we're going to have problems from time to time. And now, just because we have difficulties doesn't mean that we're bad people. Remember, this too will pass. Crises help us to grow. They're painful at the time, but we come out on the other side stronger and have more faith than before. Think about it. God has allowed this crisis to develop, that you might develop more faith and your character might be developed as well. He knows what you're capable of being. And so he is allowing you to go through it so that you will trust him more than ever. Everything has a reason. We have something to learn. Faith is developed in these times of crisis. God cares more about our character development than our comfort level. And Jesus said in Matthew, in Matthew 5, let's see if I can turn this thing off. Here we go. Jesus, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 45. I hope you'll get there, said. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and on the unjust. We all have problems from time to time. No one's immune. Good people have problems. Bad people have problems. And the children of God have problems also. The difference is how we deal with the problems. And with God, he makes a way. Sometimes, at, at the last moment, then he makes the way. Refuse to be discouraged. And I'd like you to look at Isaiah 43, verse 2. Isaiah 43, verse 2. You know, it's easy to become discouraged. Everybody can have that problem. We have something said to us, we have something go wrong, and we think that it's not for us and with us, but he is. Remember, God wants to do the best for us. Okay? Refuse to be discouraged. Isaiah 43, verse 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, 
and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. And you, when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Crises help us have a deeper relationship with God. Crises plus a relationship with God is what we need. We need God's presence with us all the time. Real Christianity is not is relationship, not religion. Much of the time we make requests of God, but short time after, if he doesn't answer right away, we think he's not paying attention and we give up praying. Just because he doesn't do the things on our time schedule or the way we think doesn't mean he didn't hear our request. I'd like you to look at Matthew 7 for a moment, if you would. Matthew 7, 7. Matthew 7, 7. And following. Matthew 7, 7 and following. And it says, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven, give you good things and to those that ask him. Therefore, whatever you want men to do, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Usually our problem is not that we don't ask. Our problem is we stop praying too soon and we don't listen. God wants to give us blessings, and that's what this Scripture verses say, if you know how to give good gifts, how much more your Father in heaven will give you good gifts. And some of us not only ask for things, but we sometimes thank him for things. But our pr biggest problem is not listening and waiting for his answer before we go and tackle the problem. I'd like you to look at 1 Samuel 13 for a moment. 1 Samuel 13 in verses 5 through 15. 1 Samuel 13, verses 5 through 15. It's a story that we're all familiar with about King Saul and how he lost his kingship. But I'd like you to look at it and see why he lost his kingship. If you read the story here in 1 Samuel 13, Verses 5 through 15, it says, Then the Philistines gathered together and to fight with the Israel. 30,000 charioteers, 6,000 horsemen, and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up against the encampment to the east of Beth Avon. And when the men of Israel saw that they were in danger, for the people were in distress. Then the people hid in caves, in thickets, and rocks, and holes, and in pits. And some of the Hebrews crossed over the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. So here the Israelites were sorely depressed because they were overwhelmed by the number of people coming against them. It says 6,000 horsemen and 30,000 chariots, and they were as a multitude as the sand on the seashore. That was intimidating for Saul and his forces. And as for Saul, he was in Gilgal, verse 7, it continues. 
He was still in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. They were intimidated. And some are intimidated by the crisis you're in today. And then he waited seven days according to the time set for, by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. So Saul said, bring the burnt offering and peace offering here to me. So here Paul, Saul is taking things into his own hands. That's the way some of us are. We're in crisis. We don't know what to do, but we're not waiting on God to tell us what to do. His people were trembling. Everybody was trembling. And it says, he, so Saul brought the burnt offering and the peace offering here to me, and he offered the burnt offering. And as soon as he did, it says, now verse 10, now it happened, as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering, that Samuel came. He jumped ahead. That's what we're not to do. We're to wait on the Lord. He will provide. We just need to wait on him. And Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might greet him. Verse 11, and Samuel said, what have you done, Saul said, when I saw that the people were scattering from me, and you did not come within the days appointed, and the Philistines gathered together at Michmash. Then I said, the Philistines will now come down on me from at Gilgal, and I've not made supplication of the Lord. Therefore, I felt compelled to offer a burnt offering. Here again, we see many times we take it in our own hands like Saul. And so my counsel this morning is simply wait on Jesus. He will help you in whatever challenge you face. I've been in the situation before when I was in college. I had ate my last bowl of rice and beans. I paid my tithe and didn't know what was going to happen next. I've been there. I may be there again. I don't know. But this one thing I know, God will provide. And so it says that Samuel did come, just not when Saul wanted him to. Sometimes we're the same way. We want to rush ahead. We think it's one minute to midnight. And I don't have any more time, but God will provide. Watch. That day in college, I went to bed, not worrying about it, not thinking about it anymore. I said, God, you'll provide. I don't know how, I don't know when. And he did. A few hours after I had my last meal, someone called me on the phone and said, the Lord impressed me that you need food. Is that right? And I didn't say a word. And then they said, I'm going to bring you a bag of groceries because God impressed me to bring it to you. God wants to do the same for you when you're in that situation, when you're in need, and he will provide. I've seen it with finances. I've seen it with food. I've seen it with all kinds of things. God will provide. <clears throat> Verse 13 says, And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You've not kept the command of the Lord your God, for he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. Verse 14, but now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Then Samuel arose, <clears throat> went up from Gilgal to give you a Benjamin, and Saul numbered the people present with him, about 600 men. You know, I noticed the other yesterday on the internet, people are praying now because of the coronavirus like never before. 
they did a study here in the last week, and it says people are praying as, like never before. 55% say they prayed for the virus to end. And the surprising part is that 15% of those are people that seldom or never pray, but all of a sudden, because of the crisis, they're praying. Crisis reveals what really matters in life. And I'd like to go back to Psalm 23, verse 4, if you would with me for a minute. Psalm 23, verse 4. And it says, <clears throat> Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. God is with us no matter what. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What's his rod? His rod is the rod of protection. His staff is the staff of comfort and guidance. God wants to, us to learn to trust him in every circumstance. This one too. Whatever you're going through, and I don't know if it's loss of job or money, I don't know what it is, but I know that God is faithful and will help you through this time too. So I'd like you to remember that. And um, again, I would like to give you a couple of things. The post office box for sending in your tithe and offering. I'm particularly concerned about the, the uh, offerings right now because the expenses of the church still go on electric and gas and trash and water and in two of my churches they still go on so please remember this post office box 1469 and hobbs and the zip is 88241 if you send it there the treasurer will get it in lovington 